I'm about to do your Sagittarius tarot reading for March 2022, and in this Sagittarius love reading, we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. Sagittarius, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading. Now, if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you always get notified anytime I post a new Sagittarius tarot reading for you. Now, let's get on with this Sagittarius love reading today because today we are going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. And I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you here in March 2022. Then I'm going to get three cards for you, Sagittarius, three cards for your person. And then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck, just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. Now, I do want to say that this is not a personal reading. This is a general collective reading, which means I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the same way I would if I were doing a personal reading for you. Now, if a personal reading with me is something you're interested in, I would be happy to do a personal reading for you, and you can get all the information about my readings in the description as well as in the first pinned comment right below this video. But this is a general collective reading, which means I'm tapping into the collective energy of a large group of Sagittarius people that I'm responsible for getting messages for. And that also means that there's no possible way this reading is going to resonate with literally every single Sagittarius person on the whole planet all at the same time. Because not every single Sagittarius person on the whole planet is going through the exact same situation or experiencing the same energies all at the same time. It's also important to keep in mind in general collective readings like this that energies can and do get flipped around backwards from time to time, especially for cross watchers, which really means that if you're not a Sagittarius and you're watching this Sagittarius love reading because you're interested in a Sagittarius and you want to know what's going on between the two of you, I'm totally fine with that. Just keep in mind, though, that especially for cross watchers, energies are very prone to get flipped around backwards. So you just got to take it as it resonates. Now, regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you should still probably watch the videos for your moon sign, your rising sign, and your Venus sign, just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the information about those videos, info on my personal readings, the different tarot decks I use in this reading, information about orgone pyramids, crystals, all kinds of fun, helpful stuff. I'm even giving away free Sagittarius merchandise, and you can find the link about that in the description below, too. But enough yakking. I know you've waited patiently for the next Sagittarius reading, so let's get down to business and let's get one card for what is the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest here in March 2022, please. Okay. Okay. Let's get three cards for you, Sagittarius. What's going on with Sagittarius as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them in March 2022, please? Let's get three cards for what's going on with Sagittarius. Okay, these two came out together at the end. I'll read those to you together. I see. Let's get three cards for your person. What's going on with Sagittarius' romantic person of interest as it relates to Sagittarius and the connection between them here in March 2022, please? Let's get one more. Thank you. All right. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Page of Wands. Now, pages are messengers. Wands are about passion and desire, so this can represent news and messages and communication about passion and desire. This is also the minor arcana version of the Fool card. The Fool is about taking a blind leap of faith on something, not really thinking it through beforehand, just saying screw it and jumping off the cliff and then worrying about how to grow wings on the way down. This is a much more toned down version of that same kind of an energy though. This is more about having the willingness to take the very first steps down a brand new path towards something that there's a lot of passion and desire for. <sighs> Ooh, I'm not liking this already, I'll be honest with you. I'd say out of the last 
seven readings I've done for this channel. I've only had one of them where there wasn't some bad stuff going on behind the scenes that I feel like I'm exposing. Right under this page of wands, I have the Knight of Wands. So in a sense, it looks like we're making progress or things are moving up a level here, intensifying. This Knight of Wands is the second fastest knight in the deck. This is about rushing forward, taking rapid, passionate action towards something there's a lot of passion and desire for. This can be rapid forward movement on something, rapid progress on something. This can also be what's referred to as the player of the tarot deck. Sometimes this is a, a wishy-washy, in-and-out, back-and-forth kind of an energy. Someone who can rush in all passionately and get what they want, rush out all passionately somewhere else and get what they want, and kind of run back and forth trying to play both sides of the fence. This can be someone who has shifting loyalties, who can't really stay in one place for too very long without feeling like they need to run off and go somewhere else. This is the kind of person who, when their wand stands up and points in a certain direction, they got to go running down the path to find out what their wand is pointing out. So it looks like we got some passionate messages being exchanged here and some wishy-washy in and out, back and forth energy, possibly a player we're dealing with. I'll be damned. We've got the Fool right underneath that. I said this is the Minor Arcana version of the Fool. A little bit more toned down energy, but now we're amplifying the energy and moving up into that full type of an energy. This is about taking the blind leap of faith on something, not thinking it through, just saying, I'm going for it, jumping off the cliff and worrying about how to grow wings on the way down. Like taking some action on something, starting some new thing, and trying to figure it out as you move along here. This can be an energy of risk-taking, as in taking risks outside the connection, especially when it's right here with this kind of an energy of the, the Page of Wands, the Knight of Wands, escalating that, just going for it. Right under that, I have the Empress. This represents the birth of something new. Not feeling it here. Whatever this is, it has created an energy of strength. This is Leo energy. This card always tells me that there is a difficult situation that you're going through and it's requiring you to dig down deep and tap into your internal strength in order to even make it through this. It tells me you have the internal strength to make it through this. You're just kind of being forced to dig down deep and find it so you can make it through. It can also be an energy of trying to tame that beast inside yourself, trying to rein yourself in, trying to hold yourself back, trying to not rush forward too quickly and make some kind of a mistake here trying to not let your emotions get the best of you. A lot of times this overall energy is not just telling me the gist of the story it's going to tell me in this reading. This can be energy that is affecting both of you here. So if your person is this escalating wands energy about passion and desire, sexual energy and like escalating that and becoming a player and taking risks outside of the connection and birthing something new, that can be an energy that creates a difficult situation for you where you need your internal strength to make it through. This can also represent your person kind of struggling, trying to rein themselves in, trying to tame that beast inside themselves that's causing them to take those kinds of actions. Again, this is overall energy, kind of the gist of what this reading is going to talk to me about. This mutual point of interest is shared energy that's affecting both of you. So Sagittarius, this is affecting you. It's affecting your person. It doesn't necessarily have to be affecting you both exactly the same way, but the mutual point of interest between the two of you in March 2022, Sagittarius, is the tower. This is an abrupt change taking place here. This is a, a foundation rocking event. This is a game changer. This is when something comes crashing down all around you guys. This is usually like a belief system that you're that you have, a mental model of the world that you're operating from. This can be some sort of a metaphysical structure that or a meta a metaphorical structure that you've built in your life where there's some place that you're not really supposed to be, something that's not meant for you. And this is the universe kind of kicking the tower down to force your hand at moving on is something here. This is card 16 of the Major Arcana. In numerology, you would take the 16, that 1 and the 6, and add those together to get 7. So this is a 7. It's the number of the divine. So like when a tower moment happens for somebody, 
one of the first things they do is they're like, why is this happening to me? But this is the divine stepping in to remove something from your life that's not meant for you, someplace you're not supposed to be. So this isn't something happening to you. In reality, it's something happening for you. It's just during the time when the tower is coming down and immediately after that, oftentimes it doesn't feel like it's happening for you. It feels like it's happening to you. So let me clarify this, find out what's going on. Why is the tower here as the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest in March 2022, please? Why is the tower here? get one more tell, tell me more about this tower please okay there it is thank you we'll shuffle the rest of the way through just in case there's anything else yeah there it is okay on the bottom of the deck we have the page of swords again pages are messengers so this would be news messages communications this is also an energy of someone who's trying to learn something, trying to figure something out. It can even be an energy of spying or keeping tabs on someone. <sighs> Scoping out their social media pages, driving past where they live, where they work, asking people about them overall, trying to figure something out. This can be about snooping and spying, like going through their phone. This can even be an external person who saw something happen and then came and reported it back to one of you. There's the Page of Wands again. That's what I'm feeling like this is. Like somebody saw something here. What they saw was passionate messages being delivered, being exchanged with someone that probably wasn't you. Again, that Page of Wands is the overall energy of the reading. Yeah, that's it for sure. Eight of Wands is next. This is Sagittarius energy. This is rapid back and forth passionate communication now sometimes this can also be like a whole lot of energy happening all at once a lot coming at you at once to where it feels overwhelming almost like trying to take a drink of water out of a fire hose it can knock you on your ass but yeah i got too many pages here for sure i've got two pages there i've got a page here so there's definitely passionate communications going on looks like there's definitely rapid forward movement towards passion taking actions of passion and desire probably being a player with that full energy and the knight of wands there and an overall energy of someone either discovering this probably you or someone seeing this taking place and reporting it back to you that's probably where this tower is coming from probably the foundation rocking event that we're talking about here to clarify the tower I got the King of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, and there's the Fool again. This King of Wands is Sagittarius energy. Sometimes this is Leo energy, but this is a very bold, passionate, fiery, determined person who knows exactly what they want. They go after what they want with bold, passionate, fiery determination. The King of Wands doesn't take no for an answer. He knows what he wants. He goes out and gets it. It's a very driven, very motivated kind of a person who's willing to move mountains in order to get what he wants. Now, the wand does also represent the phallic symbol of the tarot deck. So it can represent the male phallus using it to be intimate, sex, sexual energy, things like that. This is the pinnacle of that wand suit. So this is someone who's not only driven and motivated, it's someone who has a lot of passion and desire and is motivated by passion. Could be motivated by sexual energy, which could be why we're seeing all these passionate messages, this player activity, and someone taking risks outside of the connection in order to birth something new. Next we have the Queen of Pentacles. This is usually Capricorn energy or an Earth sign feminine energy. This is the centerpiece of the home and family life. This is usually like a loving, nurturing, mothering abundant prosperous type of an energy this is who you would build the home life and the family life around it can represent a wife it can represent a mother it can represent just the person who manages the assets and resources of the home this is almost feeling like even though you're a sagittarius this is almost feeling like the energy that your person was in and this feels like the energy that you were in here 
It could be vice versa in that. This could just be that your person had all this passion and desire and was exchanging passionate messages and got caught exchanging all these passionate messages with an earth sign or with a wife of someone that maybe that's not you. Maybe they are married and they were seeing you on the side. I'm not 100% sure yet, but they got caught messaging with somebody. The next card to clarify the tower is the five of cups. This is Scorpio energy. This is sadness and remorse about the past. It's about being focused on these three cups that have been spilled. All the love and emotions that have been spilled and wasted. All the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled and wasted. Now notice in the background there are still two upright cups. Completely full cups. That represents the two of cups. The love and emotions in a, a connection between the two people here. But that doesn't have the focus here. What's being focused on is the, the cups that have been spilled. This is really a card about where your focus is. And what most people don't realize about their focus is your focus literally dictates to you what emotions you feel and what energies you experience. So if you're focused on the past, you're going to feel the way you felt in the past. If you're focused on something that you've lost, you're going to feel that loss. If you focus on something that you think is missing in your life, you're going to feel that gap in your life. So this is a card about controlling your focus. And if you allow your focus to go to something that's negative, you will experience negative lower vibrational emotions and energies. On the opposite side of that coin, if you focus on something that you have, something that you can be happy about, focus on the connection, you can experience more positive emotions. But this is someone being stuck on the past, having some remorse about what they did in the past this could be your you being sad about what happened here this could be your person having remorse or regrets about what happened here it looks like about taking this leap of faith again the fool we've got the fool already here in the overall energy of the reading the minor arcana version of the fool we've already seen twice this player energy this energy of risk taking outside the connection to birth something new that's that same energy here risk taking outside the connection didn't think it through just said screw it and went for it took the blind leap of faith and probably having some regrets and some remorse about doing that now that is the shared energy that's affecting both of you here in march 2022 sagittarius i'm going to come back to that again as i clarify your energy see how it applies to you i'll come back to it again when i clarify your person's energy to see how it applies to them but that's the, the mutual point of interest between you for March 2022. Sagittarius, your energy in this connection is the Queen of Wands, the Magician, and then these two came out together at the end, the Moon and the Eight of Swords. So this Queen of Wands is usually Aries or Leo energy. It can definitely be Sagittarius energy. It's a feminine fire sign energy. Again, much like this King of Wands, it's someone who has a lot of passion and desire, who knows exactly what they want. They go after what they want with bold, passionate, fiery determination. She don't take no for an answer either. She knows what she wants. She doesn't accept excuses. She goes out and she gets what she wants. So this feels like it's about you knowing what you want here. Tell me more about this Queen of Wands. What is that here for Sagittarius in March 2022, please? That one clearly wanted to come out because it shot completely over my shoulder. Let's get one more on this Queen of Wands for Sagittarius, please. Why is that here for Saggy? Thank you. <clears throat> on the bottom of the deck, Temperance. This is the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. This is a card of patience. It's about being patient on something. It's about blending things together little bits at a time and not being in a big hurry about it. Being willing to blend things together little bits at a time, take a step back and look at the big picture to see how's all this working out before you come back in and blend a little bit more to make some fine tuning adjustments. This can also be a card of reconciliation. This can also be a card of assimilating changes that have taken place and i promise you when there is a tower like this there are some very dramatic very abrupt changes taking place this is the kind of thing where once this tower happens nothing's the same as it was the day before that and it requires some temperance in order to assimilate those changes and balance yourself out yeah this is definitely about changes because right under temperance 
is the world. This is the final card of the Major Arcana. I've got the very beginning card of the Major Arcana in the Fool, in the Mutual Energy, and here I've got the final card. So this represents a full cycle between the two of you, going from the very beginning all the way to the completion. This is the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. Yeah, and I think that was brought about by the Five of Swords. This is Aquarius energy. Fives are about conflict. So this is like a conflict in communications oftentimes. This is usually like a big fight, an argument, using words like weapons, using tongues like swords to cut each other, bitter words being spoken. This is a very painful situation here. This is a mentally and psychologically painful situation. It can also represent someone having a winning at all cost type of a mentality. In other words, like, I'm going to get what I want, and I don't really care what happens to you as long as I get what I want. If you happen to get hurt in the process of me taking this leap of faith and me following my wand around, taking all this player type actions to start something new, if you get hurt in that process, well, sorry about your luck, but I'm taking care of what I want here. I think that's it here. We've got the Three of Cups right under that. Cancer Energy. Now, a lot of times, this is a positive card. This is about being reunited and celebrating. I don't feel that here at all based on what I've seen so far. The other meaning to this card is a third-party love connection because we do have three cups of love in this picture here. I think that's what the painful situation is, is that third cup of love showing up, the passionate messages, the passionate activity here, the birth of something new. Some tower comes down, there's a bunch of changes, and that ends a cycle between the two of you and starts a new cycle. And that's all related to you and what it is that you want. To clarify that Queen of Wands, I got the Two of Cups, the Magician, and the Ace of Pentacles. So the Two of Cups is Cancer Energy. This is a love connection between two people. This is I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected. But it is a two, and in tarot, twos represent needing to make a choice. So there's some sort of a choice in this love connection. You're either trying to be patient here or assimilate changes. This is telling me that at least a piece of you still feels like there is a connection because we see these same two cups in the background of this five of cups. This connection may not have your focus right now, but for you it's still there in a sense. Next we have the Magician. <clears throat> this is card one of the Major Arcana. We've got card zero in the Fool. We've got card one here. This represents the Divine Masculine Energy of the Tarot deck. This is the Mac Daddy Master Manifester of the Tarot deck. He's got all four aces on the table in front of him. So he's got all the tools, all the abilities, all the resources to manifest or create from nothing, whatever it is his will desires. Those four aces are the four ones of the suits. Those four ones represent 1111, which is the number of manifestation. So this is telling me that you're actively trying to manifest what you want. You could be actively trying to manifest something related to this connection, maybe trying to manifest the connection back. This could be you trying to manifest a decision in this connection. If your person has started something new somewhere else, this could be you trying to manifest a decision about who they're going to be with. This could be you knowing exactly what you want, assimilating the changes here, ending the cycle between the two of you with this big blowout type of a fight because there were three cups of love in the picture. And this could be you trying to manifest a new connection that's much more worthy of what you deserve. You could be trying to manifest some opportunity here. This Ace of Pentacles is a practical, tangible opportunity being presented to you by the universe. This is the seed that has the potential to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that we all want. That maximum stability, maximum abundance and prosperity, the happy, stable home life we all want. The Ten of Pentacles can also be like the combining together of two people or two families and all their assets and resources to build something stable and abundant. Now, this is not the Ten of Pentacles in and of itself. It's just an opportunity that could turn into that. And that's the thing about aces, they're opportunities. You have to grab those and do something with them, otherwise they just represent empty potential. So, you may have just said screw it and made a choice in this love connection, and now you're trying to manifest a new opportunity somewhere else. Or you could be trying to manifest an opportunity here 
to get this connection back. I'm not 100% sure just yet, but the next card in your energy, Sagittarius, is that same Magician card again. We've already seen it once. This is you being the Mac Daddy Master Manifester. This is you having all the tools, abilities, and resources to create the world around you, to be in alignment with whatever it is your will desires. You know what you want, and this is you trying to actively create it. Tell me about the Magician, please. Why is the Magician here for Sagittarius? March 2022. Let's get one more on the Magician, please. Thank you. <clears throat> on the bottom of the deck, Seven of Pentacles. This is Taurus energy. This is a period of time where you're taking a pause to reflect and take stock of this connection, to take stock of this whole damn situation that you found yourself in. And what you're doing is looking at these seven seeds that have been planted here between the two of you. And you're trying to decide, is this going to grow into the Ten of Pentacles? We just talked about the seed with the potential to get to the Ten of Pentacles. You're looking at these seeds, trying to decide, is this worth me investing in or continuing to invest in or even reinvesting in after all this has happened? Is this going to turn into what it is that I desire? Is this what I'm actually trying to manifest here? Or is this a spot where, no, this isn't it at all? And maybe it's time for me to just cut my losses and move on. So this represents that period of time where you're pausing to reflect on and like ask yourself those types of questions here. Next, we have another seven. So I've got two sevens in a row. The seven of cups is Scorpio energy. This is options and choices, but confusion about the options and choices. There's a lot of cups here. There's a lot of different stuff in these cups, a lot of different ways this situation could play itself out. And there's a lot of emotions involved for you and you're not wanting to make a mistake. So you're having some confusion about this. Maybe. This could be just your person having too damn many options. And that's what you're taking stock of here. Because the very next card we have is death. More Scorpio energy. This is an ending to something. This is something dying so that it can be replaced with something better. Or something dying so that it can be reborn again in a more beautiful way. This is usually a very pain, a painful transformation process taking place here. Now to clarify this magician, like you trying to manifest and create the world around you to be the way you want it to be. We have the sun, the high priestess, and the six of wands. So the sun is the happiest card in the deck. It represents happiness, joy, abundance, bliss, harmony. Really hard to get a better card than the sun. So this is you trying to manifest your own happiness here. Trying to manifest what you want, the thing that you believe is going to make you happy. Now another meaning for this card can be illumination, as in like the sun shining into the darkness and illuminating something so you can see it for what it is. I'll come back to that in just a minute. Next, we have the High Priestess. This is card two of the Major Arcana. So now we're going from card zero to card one with the Magician twice in your energy. Now we've got card two, the High Priestess here. So we're taking the sequential steps up here. And this is also talking about manifesting. Because the way that you actually manifest is step one, you use your conscious mind to create the idea for what it is that you actually want. And then you use your conscious mind to plant the seed for what you want into your unconscious mind. She represents the unconscious mind. She's the connection to spirit, to source, the universe. You plant the seed of what you want in your unconscious mind so that you're unconsciously broadcasting to the universe what it is that you want. When you broadcast that to the universe, it mirrors it back to you. The third step in that process is this Empress card that we see down here in the story on the bottom of the deck for the overall energy. That's how it gets birthed into our physical 3D reality. But this is like you being in the stages of manifesting. You have literally everything you need in order to manifest what you want. Now she is also the source of all the emotions in the tarot deck, all the water you see throughout all the tarot cards. She's the source of all the, in the intuition. She's card two of the major arcana, so she rules over the twos of the deck. The twos are about choices. We see the very first clarifier for you is the two of cups. 
I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but the center card in your person's energy is the Two of Swords. So she rules over those choices and those decisions. She's also the divine, excuse me, divine feminine of the tarot deck. And this card is laying directly next to the magician here. Divine masculine, divine feminine. That is what you're trying to manifest. You're trying to manifest a divine connection. A connection that's like where you're supposed to be. The connection that would bring you your happiness. And this connection is not the connection you were supposed to be in, which is why the universe, the divine, stepped in and knocked it down for you. It's kind of their way of forcing you to move on. A lot of times when that happens, the universe has given you plenty of hints along the way. Red flags, things have happened over the course of the relationship where you're being encouraged to move on. That this isn't for you, you should split it and go somewhere else. But we're human. We, sometimes we don't see that as the message. Sometimes we're just freaking stubborn and we refuse to do it. Well, this is the universe getting tired of telling you the same thing over and over again. So they step in and they knock the tower down and give you no choice but to move forward. Which brings us to the last card to clarify the magician, the Six of Wands. This is Leo energy. This is a card of recognition, as in you finally recognizing something and what you're recognizing is allowing you to move forward in success and victory. I think what you're recognizing is that you have the power to manifest what you want. You're finally recognizing that, that you deserve better than this kind of a connection during this time where you're taking stock of what's going on here. You deserve an opportunity. You're trying to manifest an opportunity to get your happiness. And I think this is you intuitively knowing and recognizing that it's time to move on here. The final card in your energy, Sagittarius, for March 2022. Actually, you got two, the Moon and the Eight of Swords. Now, the Moon is Pisces energy. This is an energy of fear, worry, anxiety. It's an energy of feeling like something's hidden in the dark, like you can't quite see everything. Sometimes this card can mean that there are secrets being kept or things that you can't see, things you don't know about yet. The other card here is the Eight of Swords, Gemini energy of thinking about something over and over and over again on this repeating loop in your mind and not being sure what the safe step to take is and feeling stuck, trapped, and blocked because you don't know what the safe step to take is. This is an energy of overthinking something. This is an energy of feeling like there's a secret being kept from you, like there's something you can't see that you don't know about, and being fearful and worried about that. Could be one more thing that you're recognizing, and I said I would come back to this in a second when I said the sun can be illumination. When you've got something hidden in the dark from you that you're worried about and thinking about and grinding on and can't quite shut your mind off about it because it's just this nagging feeling that you got something going on that's not visible yet, something's hidden in the dark. Both of these cards individually can mean a secret is being kept, and you've got both of them right here. So anytime both of these cards are present for somebody, especially this close together, it's a pretty good sure bet that there's something going on that they didn't know about. That got recognized, I think, because the sun shined into the darkness and illuminated what was being hidden in the dark. We saw that page of swords that was related to the tower coming down, that was related to the page of wands that was directly underneath it. I think somebody saw what happened or you saw what happened. You recognized something. You saw text messages on their phone or saw them somehow it came to be in the light of what was going on and you could see it for what it is. So tell me more about the moon and the eight of swords for Sagittarius, please. Why is the moon eight of swords here? Yeah. Let's get two more on this moon and eight of swords for Sagittarius, please. Okay. Bottom of the deck. Temperance again, the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. This is you being patient. This is you assimilating the changes that took place after the tower came crashing down. Once all this was uncovered, all the stuff that you were fearful and worried about that you thought was being hidden in the dark and you couldn't quite stop from thinking about it over and over again, this is you assimilating the changes to that. We have the Three of Wands right under that. This is Aries energy. 
This is about being at the beginning stages of manifesting what it is that you want. In the card right before this, the Two of Wands, you're at a fork in the road. You're like at a crossroads in your life, some decision point about which path leads you to the world that you really want and which path do you have to leave behind to get there. Well, in the Three of Wands, you've already made that decision. You've chosen the path that leads you to the world you want. It's probably why your very first card is the Queen of Wands. She knows exactly what she wants. She tries to go out and get it. You're manifesting something. You're manifesting what you believe would be your happiness, a real love connection, a divine love connection where you're actually counterparts in balance, going for the same thing here. This is you being at the beginning stages of manifesting what you want and having a positive expectancy that the thing you want is actually going to happen it just hasn't happened yet. It hasn't physically materialized in the physical 3D reality yet. So this is an energy of you waiting on it still, but having a positive expectancy that it's going to happen. <clears throat> now to clarify the moon and the eight of swords, I got the empress, the five of wands, the ace of cups, and the five of pentacles. Again, we got the zero, the one, the two of the major arcana. I already told you the story about manifesting. The third step is the empress. This is the gateway between the universe, the divine, God, spirit, source. However you choose to view that, she's the gateway between that and this physical reality that we live in. So all new things get birthed into our reality. Whenever someone is trying to manifest something, it gets birthed into the physical 3D reality via the Empress energy. So this is telling me you are very clear on what it is that you want. You have everything you need to manifest what you want. You're actively trying to manifest what you believe will bring you to your happiness. And it's it's about to happen for you here. Now, she can also represent the birth of something new, which is kind of what we saw here in the story of the overall energy. Passionate messages being exchanged, player energy, shifting loyalties in and out, back and forth, acting like a player, following their wand, taking a leap of faith, taking risks outside of the connection and birthing something new that created a situation that's very difficult for you, ended a cycle between the two of you and started a brand new cycle for you. So this can also represent that that's what you couldn't get out of your head, that what was being hidden in the dark from you was actually the birth of something new turns out that is what happened that got reported to you got discovered got found out had the light shined on it exposing it for what it is and that brought the tower down here next we have the five of wands this is leo energy fives are conflict this wands are about desire passion so this is a conflict in your desires an internal conflict where a piece of you wants one thing Another piece of you wants pretty much the opposite thing. So you're having this internal battle of tug of war in your desires in terms of what it is that you want. Kind of pulling yourself in multiple different directions at the same time. Now, this could be you. This could be a thing where you had this nagging feeling something was going on behind your back. You couldn't quite shut your mind off about it. One piece of you was pulling that way and another piece of you didn't want to think that, didn't want to believe that. So you were kind of pulling in the opposite direction could be a conflict like that it seems clear to me that you know exactly what you want and you're going for it this could even be your person being internally conflicted holy shit i just now noticed that their very first card is that five of wands so could be your person's conflict and a piece of them wanted you a piece of them wanted to go birth something new somewhere else i think that's it i think this is what was hidden from you your person wanted to go birth something new and wanted to still keep you the next card to clarify the moon and the eight of swords is the ace of cups a new beginning in love and emotions so that's what they wanted a piece of them wanted you a piece of them wanted to birth a new beginning in love and emotions somewhere else and that leads us to the five of pentacles taurus energy again fives are conflict this is a card of abandonment this is about being abandoned about being cast aside about being left out in the cold this is a breakup card right here. I think that that secret was being kept and you couldn't shake it. You couldn't get your mind off of it. I think you may not have had any actual proof at a certain point in time, but your gut was telling you something. Your intuition was talking to you. 
letting you know what was going on. And at some point it became recognized. At some point the sun was shined on it, exposed it. We had that page of swords. Either you found something, you recognized something, or someone else saw something and reported it to you. That's your energy in this connection in March 2022, Sagittarius. Let me scoot this over a little bit, get us some more room here. And take a look at your person's energy because in their energy, we have that Five of Wands. The Two of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Five of Wands, again, is Leo energy. Again, we just saw that in the last clarifiers. This was part of what was hidden in the dark from you. This is an internal conflict that your person had in their desires. A piece of them wanted one thing, a piece of them wanted the opposite of that, and they had this battle of tug of war going on in terms of what they want. Do I want to stay with Sagittarius? Do I want to run off and be a player? Take the leap of faith, take risks outside of the connection and birth something new. Again, the birthing something new and that internal conflict are what was hidden in the dark. The Ace of Cups. <sighs> Tell me more about this Five of Wands for Sagittarius's person, please. Why is that here for Saggy's person? Bottom of the deck, death, Scorpio energy. Again, an ending to something, something dying. So they can either be reborn again more beautifully or something dying and withering and falling away so that it can be replaced by something else. This is an ending. This is a painful transformation process. I wonder if that's the Eight of Pentacles. This is Virgo energy of putting in the work on something, putting in the time, the effort, the energy on something or at the very least, being willing to put in the work, time, effort, and energy on something. It could be that death in this connection was caused by their internal conflict and their willingness to put in the work, sending passionate messages to somebody that wasn't you, running around being a player with somebody that wasn't you, taking risks with somebody that wasn't you, and birthing something new. Could be that's what it's telling me. Death was caused by that internal conflict and where they were putting in their work. <sighs> to clarify this Five of Wands, I got the Seven of Wands, the Two of Swords, and the Four of Pentacles. Seven of Wands is more Leo energy. This is an energy of like being walled off and defensive about something. It's an energy of like defending their position, defending their stance on something can be defending against accusations here. These other wands represent other people, their words, their opinions, the things they're doing, the things they're saying, all coming at your person and them having to defend themselves against that. This could be them defending against accusations from you or maybe that other person that saw what was going on. Your person being defensive here. This is also sometimes an energy of being willing to fight for what it is that they desire. And we can see that they were internally conflicted on what they want. And I think a piece of them had to run off and find out what their wand was pointing at. And they were willing to defend and protect that ability. Next, we have the Two of Swords. Again, that's the next card in your person's energy I'm going to clarify next. Libra energy of a decision needing to be made, only it's not being made. Either because they don't have enough information to make the decision, there's something they can't see, hence that blindfold, or something they don't want to see, like wearing blinders on purpose and refusing to look at something, and that prevents the decision from being made. I can't help but notice how prevalent the moon is on that card. Your final clarifier, the moon was one, or your final card was the moon and the eight of swords, something being hidden in the dark, a secret being kept. I think that's what was going on. Your person was internally conflicted wanting to defend their position to be able to go after whatever they wanted, possibly defending against accusations, trying to keep something secret, and not really able to decide exactly what it is they want. Do they want you? Do they want this other person? And they couldn't make up their mind. <clears throat> Next, we have the Four of Pentacles, Capricorn energy. This is an energy of holding on tight to something and not wanting to let go of it. And I feel like that's what was going on. Your person couldn't decide because they wanted to hold on to you and this other person. It's like they wanted to have their cake and eat it too. This is like a greedy, stingy kind of an energy here. Again, this is what brought death to the connection. 
Next card for your person's energy in March 2022, Sagittarius, is the Two of Swords. We just saw this card. Libra energy of a decision needing to be made, only it's not being made. Tell me more about the Two of Swords, please. Why is that here for Sagittarius? Let's get two more on this Two of Swords, please. We got some flip over in the deck here. There's that one. That one. Okay. On the bottom of the deck, Temperance, the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. I don't think they could decide between you and the other person. I think they were trying to be patient about it. This is also them probably trying to assimilate the changes that took place here when the tower came down. Looks like they followed their wand towards some other person. And now I'm thinking they're having some sadness and remorse and possibly some regrets about taking that leap of faith. Now, are they regretful that they did it? Or are they regretful that they got caught? I can't say for sure. It looks like they're waiting on something too, though. This is Aries energy, the Three of Wands, an energy of waiting and having this positive expectancy that what they're waiting on is actually going to materialize. It just hasn't happened yet. Now, another meaning for temperance can be reconciliation. So your person could be trying to make a decision about whether they can reconcile this with you or not and waiting on something about that, waiting on things to be reconciled, to be balanced out between the two of you. Could be waiting to express their feelings about reconciling. I got the King of Cups under that, Pisces or Scorpio energy. This is someone who doesn't wear their heart on their sleeve. So your person still has emotions for you. They just don't outwardly express that. They don't tell you how they feel. They don't make it easy to see how they feel. This is someone who no matter how rough and choppy the waters get around them, it's really hard to tell what's going on with them. The Eight of Cups under that, the more Pisces energy. This is an energy of detachment. Emotional detachment, physical detachment, physically walking away. I think they're waiting on you for something. And they're just not telling you what they feel right now. Because it looks very clear to me that you've had it with the BS and you're, you've already broken up with them. This tower has already come down as far as you're concerned because you see clearly exactly what they were hiding from you. This feels like you detaching from them emotionally, you physically walking away from them. The person in this card is walking away from eight full cups of love because they know there's something better for them out there than this. They know they deserve better than this eight cups and they're choosing to walk away to go off in search of their ninth and their tenth cup. Now to clarify this two of swords for your person, we got the world, strength, the star, and the page of cups. This world card, like I said, is the final card of the major arcana. Again, I've seen this on your side already. Now I'm seeing it on their side. This is a completed cycle between the two of you. This has been the full shebang. This is the whole trip all the way through from beginning to end. And now it's the beginning of a new cycle. So this, to me, is completed. It's over with here. I don't know that they're willing to look at that. And that's affecting their ability to make a decision here. Maybe this is they don't have the ability to make a decision because it's not even their damn decision anymore. They already screwed the pooch, so to speak, and knocked the tower down, and it's your decision. Maybe they're waiting on you to decide. Maybe you've already decided that this is the ending of it here. This is over. Either way, we've got strength next. This is Leo energy. We've already seen strength here in the story of the overall energy of the reading. There it is right under the birth of something new. And the very next card is the world. So we've got the world and strength together like that in both spots here. This is a difficult situation for them to deal with. It's requiring a lot of internal strength and a lot of internal courage to make it through this situation here. But that's their problem because they're the one that did this. Next, we have the star, Aquarius energy. 
This is a card of healing. It's a card of hope. It's also card 16, 17, I mean, of the Major Arcana. Card 16, the one right before this, is the Tower. You don't make it to the Star Energy without going through a Tower moment first. When that Tower came crashing down, it changed everything. It was probably really hard for your person to see the path moving forward from there. Hence the blindfold that they have on. This is the guiding light from the universe that shows up to light the way for them so that they can see their way moving forward. This is where their hope comes from. It's where healing comes from. So this is telling me that your person is probably having the hope that if they rein themselves in, they can start a new cycle with you. They can get this all balanced back out. And it looks like they're just waiting on that to happen and trying to maintain the hope that they can heal this problem that they've caused with you. Next, we have the Page of Cups. This is news, messages, communications about love and emotions. This can be the expressing of feelings. This can be an apology from your person here. Hoping that if they apologize, that will just fix the whole situation here. This is a page, though. This, this is the least developed of the court cards. This is someone who emotionally isn't fully developed yet. They're emotionally immature. And they've got a fish in their cup because they're not fully confident in their position. They don't want you to look at them in the eyes. That's why they have the fish there. It's a way to distract you. Like, hey, look over here. Don't look at me. I don't want you to see me because I'm not confident. I'm not fully developed. I'm emotionally immature. And I would rather distract you with the cup so your attention and focus goes there instead of at me. Because I don't want you to be able to see what I'm up to here. I don't want you to be able to see... Everything I'm up to here. <sighs> Final card in your person's energy for March 2022, Sagittarius. The Nine of Cups. Pisces energy. This is sometimes a card of wish fulfillment, but this is a singles energy. This is someone who is emotionally single. This is also sometimes an energy of someone who's like self-centered and smug and like concerned about what their personal wishes are above anything else. This can represent someone who has a drinking problem. This can represent someone who is just like overindulgent on something, possibly overindulgent on passion and desire and following their wand when it stands up and points somewhere. Tell me about this Nine of Cups, please. Why is that here for Saggy's person in March 2022? Let's get three cards on this Nine of Cups, please. Let's get two more on this Nine of Cups for Sagittarius' person. Damn. Yeah, this person makes me want to come and smack them. I'm not sure I'm going to take these two because I got too many cards flip over all right here together. I do have a Seven of Cups, a Ten of Pentacles, and a Seven of Pentacles here. Nine of Swords just tried to fall out of the deck on me. So they got some fear, worry, and anxiety here. That's an energy of like, they've created this situation. And they're thinking about it to the point that it's got them stressed out. And they don't even want to face the situation they've created here. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. They're very concerned though, with their own personal wishes. Their own wish fulfillment. Wouldn't surprise me if this person has a drinking problem or some sort of overindulgent problem, though. To clarify that Nine of Cups, we got the King of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Chariot. King of Swords is either Gemini or Aquarius energy. This is a decision-making energy, but it's someone who, when they make their decisions, they're emotionally detached. They don't let their emotions get involved in their decision-making at all. This is usually somebody who's very logical and rational and analytical, like a, a cerebral type person, someone who's a conscious mind thinker. This is head over heart decision-making. This person doesn't consult their intuition when they decide things. They don't care about the emotions or how anyone feels about their decisions. They don't even care about the story behind what's going on. All they're looking at is what's right in front of them, the truth and the facts of the matter. They're looking at their own personal wish fulfillment when they make their decisions, and nothing more, nothing less. 
This is somebody who feels like emotionally detached, probably feels very cold and calculated. When I was on your side of the energy, I saw that five of swords, like somebody who has a winning at all costs mentality. That's kind of what this is feeling like again. I'm, I'm concerned about what I personally want and to hell with everything else. <laughs> Looks like what they personally want is this page of wands, which we've already seen numerous times, news and messages and communications about passion and desire. This is the minor arcana version of this fool card, which again is also right here under this page of wands, knight of wands, player type energy and energy of risk taking. This is someone who has the willingness to take the very first steps down, down a brand new path toward what their passion and desire is pointing at. The final card to clarify that Nine of Cups is the Chariot. This is Cancer Energy. This is the fastest moving energy in the whole tarot deck. This is using the will to move past any problems or challenges or obstacles that were in their way, getting past all that and moving forward very quickly in success and victory. This can represent getting in the Chariot and just getting the hell out of Dodge. The thing about the chariot, though, is there are no reins that connect the driver to the beast that pulled the chariot. One of those is white, one of them is black. That represents the light aspects of a person, the dark aspects, the shadow aspects of somebody. He steers this chariot and controls everything with his will alone, which means he has to be in alignment. He has to be balanced and in alignment, or this thing either doesn't go anywhere it's just stuck no different than the hanged man or it tries to run off in multiple different directions at the same time which is the energy of their very first card the most important energy out here for them that internal conflict this is almost like they're not in balance they're they're trying to pull themselves in two different directions that tears the chariot in half and these things go completely out of control i think that's what's going on here your person was so overindulgent, maybe intoxicated. Well, however it was, they were definitely out of balance here. They're emotionally detached, only really concerned about what they personally want. And that led them to do some pretty stupid stuff. Probably tore this whole thing apart. That's probably why the tower came down. And this could be you getting in the chariot and getting the hell out of Dodge. Now, if you still have questions about this situation or your relationship, Click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.